All right. <laughs> Man, I wish I had a better way to set this up. I'm going to give it like probably five minutes, something like that, before we get started. But I have... I have had the title track from Pizza Tower playing in the background for like the past 10 minutes while I waited to get stuff set up and it's kind of driving me insane. But I'll give probably like three minutes or so. Because I feel like, I feel like people are gonna so, are gonna slowly come in anyway because this is Pizza Tower. It's moderately moderately popular indie game, so I feel like I'll at least get someone. And if you get no one, no biggie. I can just, <laughs> I, I'm fine with just playing to an empty audience because this, this is also just a fun game. While I have some spare time, let me actually make another YouTube post. Eh, I, I think that's good enough. So, folks, folks, to... I immediately lost my train of thought. This is going to go great. So, I've played a lot of this game. I will be doing a new playthrough, but I have absolutely adore this game. It has a great art style. It has awesome music. You probably already heard this just before. But I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be doing a new playthrough. Because why not, right? <laughs> Sheesh. And this isn't going to be a speed run or anything, but I will be going at a moderately fast pace since I've I know what I'm doing. That being said, I am human. And I have also have not found all the secrets. So if I miss something, uh well that kind of just sucks, unfortunately. If I get through this in under two minutes, I will get to do lap twos immediately, which could be funny.
That little tech with the, the grab is so good. Oh, right. I don't know how I managed that, but we'll take it. Hello. <laughs> that was completely pointless, but whatever. I thought it was funny. Um, yeah. I guess we just keep going. I, I'm curious how far I can get before I just burn out and stop for the day. I, I'm, I know the kind of person I am. I am probably going to be able to get through the whole game. Because I am the type of person to just play a game for eight hours straight. Without getting sick of it. Oh, wait. Secrets, right. This isn't a secret, but there is a secret over there. And I, I want to at least get some of them, because the secrets are fun. Most of the time. That could not have been timed more perfectly if I tried. Also, I happen to know this offhand. The the Swedish, like, the, the Joel Vine Sauce monkeys, the reason that they're even here is because of uh, Swedish banana pizza. Because there, there are some weird pineapple... There are some weird pineapple. There are some weird pizza toppings in the world. That I've never experienced because I am I'm but I am but a humble American and have only rarely ventured outside the confines of my weird little country. Where did he go? <laughs> Hello there. I'm kind of tempted to go for an S rank on this one in particular, because it is, it, it's John Gutter. This isn't the hardest level in the world. And I have the lap twos unlocked, so I really could if I wanted to. But I, th I think I, I'll stop myself. Because if I do it here, I'm going to be tempted to do it everywhere. And there's some levels where... I, it's just not worth potentially losing the entire level's worth of progress to me trying to do something funny. <laughs> that worked out surprisingly well. And I still have that stupid instinct to always taunt in front of the door, because 
it, it, I think you can do it up to 10 times and it'll give you up to 250, 250 points just by taunting while you have the combo going. It's not super, super useful, but it's it's something. <laughs> the movement is just so fun. It's the kind of this is the kind of game where you can definitely tell the creator made it as the kind of game they would want to play. So the movement is very flowy. Everything's very expressive. It plays like a Wario, like a Wario Land game in theory, but it's so much more frantic. That was awful. <laughs> I was trying to get two birds with one stone, but. The stone bounced off the in nearby building and hit me in the jaw. While I'm here, <laughs> you. Oops. P ranking this this part was stressful as hell because I have I have P ranked a select few, mo all of the world ones, and all of or all of the ones on floor one and all the bosses, and that's about it. P ranking this one in particular was terrifying because there's so many moments where if you if you make even a small mistake while you're in the suit of armor, you are going to lose your combo. You have to play it basically perfect. Not to mention that if... Like that. I would have lost my combo there. Even if I had done everything else perfectly. Because they only give you your combo... They only refresh your combo the first time you lose the power up. All the other times the priests just say, yeah... But are you whole are are you holy enough to get the bonus twice? And the answer is no. I love the comical amount of pizza cookbooks in the background. The backgrounds in general are so are really great. Sorry about that. And I, I watched a, a speedrun or two of this game and learned some interesting tech that I'll have to, I'll have to fiddle around with at some point. The one that caught my eye was apparently if you uppercut and then just as you land from the uppercut, you open a door. Something weird happens. It'll cancel the animation or it'll cancel the animation of Pepino opening the door and you kind of just go through immediately while the sound plays. And I had a thought. I actually haven't tested this, but I wonder if it works on the level on the um, floor doors that you need boss keys to open. That was stupid of me. I feel like the answer is probably not, but it would be funny if it did. And probably save some time on speedruns.
It is indeed time to get funky. I've also heard, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that the little angry dance that Pepino does when he's, when he has a big combo going is a reference to an, to, it was like Mo, Moe's uh, funk dancing from the Simpsons. I forget if that's true, but I seem to remember seeing that episode before. Ages ago, though. My parents were, are very mu are very much into those like show those shows and movies from their time, so I would constantly end up with a backlog of old, of older movies to watch, and for what it's worth, some of them were very good. I ended up liking a lot of them. It also meant that as far as cartoons go, I was sort of of two minds that I would have the more modern stuff, like of course. I ended up watching Spongebob, I ended up watching a bunch of, like, the old PBS cartoons, but I also ended up watching a bunch of stuff like The Muppets and The Pink Panther and a lot of old, like, Looney Tunes stuff. And it's put me in a very odd situation when it comes to nostalgia. I can't quite explain it, but there's some things... There's some things that people, that kids in my generation have nostalgia for that I just do not. It is just radio silence for me. Like, um, Phineas and Ferb comes to mind. That I just watch it and I'm like, yeah, and I could see how you could have nostalgia for this, but I kind of just don't. But then there's other things, like a bunch of Looney Tunes stuff that I have nostalgia for that I have a feeling almost no one else does. Stuff like um, freaking Duck Dodgers and like old, old Looney Tunes bits and old episodes of the Pink Panther and stuff like that. I guess it's just what came down the grapevine at the time for me. Muppets, too. Like, upon... I, I revisited a lot of those old episodes as a... Uh, I forget exactly when. It was, like, a few months ago. And The Muppets is good. Like, it's really good. <laughs> it's such a great... So it's... Not just a good kids show. It's just a good show. Very fun. Now, there's a select few jokes that haven't aged incredibly well. But, I mean can't really blame the show for that you got to blame the time period and it wasn't anything too egregious thankfully i was worried there were just going to be like there's going to be like jokes or references in there that were outright just like not okay like tex avery style you go back and rewatch, and you're like oh god because <laughs> tex avery that's another thing that I grew up watching is Snoopy. Not Snoopy, uh, Droopy, rather. Which was a Tex Avery cartoon. And Tex Avery was known for two things. He's known for being a extremely talented animator. And he's known for being extremely racist. The desktop audio has been off this entire time. I'm a moron. <laughs> okay. I've, I've just been podcasting this whole time. <laughs> Oops. Sorry about that. No, it doesn't work. Okay. Maybe I, maybe I just did it wrong. As I was saying... Or, no, the, the mic audio was coming through. God, that's very annoying. But Droopy is very well, very well animated, and it was a funny show. But good God, <laughs> Tex Avery is um very interesting character, comically racist.
It is sad that I, I grew up in, in kind of a weird time for like Nickelodeon as well. That it was around the time where Nickelodeon was kind of treading water and didn't have much they could really work with besides Spongebob. And even now, of course, you... I'm sure everyone knows the deal with Nickelodeon that they've been... They've been milking Spongebob for God knows how long, and as soon as that's gone, they don't really have a lot else they can fall back on besides trying in some vain attempt to make a new show. Like, I'm sure they have some people that could work on a, on a new show, but... Especially when it comes to Spongebob, it's basically just, okay, we have this prop, we have this thing that did really, really well. So what if we just make more? When people get tired of it, that's kind of the end of it. Because there were a bunch of old Nickelodeon shows that were, um, like moder moderately good quality. A lot of them were like old uh, Dan Schneider shows, which, well, you know, he is also Dan Schneider, so I have a feeling they don't want anything to do with him or his associates. But there is, there is there's a show that comes to mind that was actually really surprisingly good. It was called it was called the inspector and it was sort of in the it, it was by the exact same people that made the pink panther so it was the same sort of quality of animation i think the god it, it's been so long since i've seen it but i think the music was also good not quite to the level of the pink panther because like that was its whole thing that was the whole thing with the pink panther was the how good the soundtrack was. And it, it it sort of took that incidental music sort of idea from things like Looney Tunes and ran with it. The Inspector doesn't quite reach that level, but the main character is a direct reference to, to the Inspector character from the Pink Panther. So it's basically a spin-off, but not really. But it's this French guy. And he's sort of like a police inspector. Oh god. <laughs> and it's sort of just him being an idiot and having to deal with, the, with his cop buddy and the commissioner in various antics. It's it's a lot of fun. I, I remember I remember it was very good. I didn't know until recently that you could actually, you could go come in from the side there. I was assumed it would, that you had to jump up from below. Now the level that makes you that will make you hate pizza cutters. I I do admire the restraint of the of these developers because there is a small amount of like pizza puns and references in here, and I know that it. If I were in that, if I were in a position of making a game like this, I would have put in a hundred times more. 
but it, is, it has its own identity, and it's... I feel like it's part of the reason why I like it so much, is that it's not... It doesn't feel the need to stuff itself full of memes and references and funny puns for the sake of making an identity for itself. It kind of just does its own thing. Now, it's not perfectly unique. It obviously borrows a ton from Wario Land. But as for the visual style and the way it be, the levels, it's very, very unique. Because the trouble, the trouble that I feel is that a lot of games feel like they have to do that and just either stuff their game full of references to other things or just tropes, if nothing else. It's a similar kind of problem as, uh, like, 3D animated movies, that so many of them are like, yeah, uh, we need this movie to sell, so let's put in a whole bunch of, of references to random nonsense and use that one movie plot that every, every 3D animated movie uses, you know, with the, the villain coming close to taking over the world and the third and the, oh, what is it called? The thing in the third act where the characters drift apart and then come back together miraculously because plot reasons. It works well sometimes, but a lot of movies feel the need to use it just because it's standard. The music in the latter half here kind of reminds me of Hotline Miami. I'm gonna take damage like five times in here. Really? <laughs> That's frustrating. that bell. <laughs> but it, something that is very, that I do have a lot of appreciation for, even if it's just because of memes, is I, I think people have gotten a lot more appreciation for Mel Blanc. And just, like, how good voice acting can absolutely carry a show like that. Because between, um... I can't think of any memes with uh, Bugs Bunny, but um, Daffy Duck slamming his dick in the car door. Mel Blanc is a very talent- well, was a very talented voice actor. And that was the thing that was so weird. I ended up... At a certain point, I ended up playing multiverses for a bit. And one of the main problems that I had with it was honestly the the, the fact that they had, um... What's the word for it? 
they had like de facto voice actors for half the characters. Oh, we got, we have to do an act two because I forgot to grab Gustavo on the way in. Gustavo, I forgot to grab Jerome on the way in. So we're gonna have to make this fast. <laughs> Okay, nice. Okay, go, 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 go. I should have used the- I should have boosted with the lava. Uh-oh. We might get an S here. Assuming I survive. Piss off. I'm busy. Piss off, you stupid pizza cutters. I'm busy. Come on, I'm so close. No! Ah. Oh. I should just wait. I should have just gone for it the next time. Yeah, I don't think it's even showing OBS, man. It's not even showing my it's not even showing the view count correctly. If I don't respond in chat for a while, by the way, it's because I've I have the thing in when in um full screen borderless. I would put it in windowed mode because there's actually a really a cute little UI element that they added. To make it look like a Windows, to make it look like a, um, a Windows window, even when you're not on a Windows OS. It looks adorable, but it also has this really crusty looking white border, so I'm, I'm just going to stick with borderless, borderless full screen. I mean, I, I guess I should. Be, I, I guess I should feel thankful that I can even see how many viewers I have, because supposedly in older versions of OBS that just wasn't an option. You would have to like load Twitch in another tab or something to be able to tell. I knew I, I knew I was going to make that mistake at least once. still stressed out from the, from the freaking lap too. Whew. I forgot to grab Jerome again. Well, you know what that means. We're doing it again. <laughs> God's sake. You know, this would be way easier if I just remembered. But I guess the stakes, the stakes make it more interesting. Oh, 
Also, I'm just not going to get the the chef the chef task for not getting hit by the pizza cutters. I I managed to get it on the other on the the main file, but I don't think it's happening today. <laughs> That one in particular requires you to be really, really precise, and basically to not enter that secret at all. Because you can do the, the rest of the level without hitting a saw pretty easily, but that secret in particular is just, like, damn near impossible without hitting a saw. Alright, so I have to do a uh, lap 2 here. It's non-negotiable, because I forgot Jerome. That was awful. <laughs> I don't know why I've, I've made things so difficult for myself, but I have. So, I guess we deal with it. I should be going this way. I'll take it. All right, I I made it before the halfway point. That's awesome. Now I just need to escape in time. <laughs> I love how slick that looks, even though I'm still in iframes. Oh shit. Stop. One screen left, then the easy screen. Whew, that's more like it. My heart is racing. Awesome. This is a fun area. It also houses one of the most obnoxious. I forgot that was there. It also houses one of the most obnoxious chef tasks in the game, in my opinion. The, the one for not hitting any cows is just diabolical. So it requires any of the chef tasks that require you to ta that tamper with your muscle memory just suck to do, and that's one of that's one of the big ones. It, the the fast food saloon one with the buttons also is in the same category. I think I'll be able to get the one for killing all the all the shopkeepers though.
gotcha. Oh, there was a secret up there. No! Hang on, I can still, I, I can make. Hang on, I need to use this spot over here as a, run, as a running start. I thought it was, ah, maybe not. I might be thinking of a different bit. I can definitely appreciate that this game is very kind when it comes to the, the things that you're required to do. Especially when it comes to things like P-Ranks. Don't get me wrong, P-Ranks are very, very hard. But they could have been so much meaner with them. I, I remember hearing some people think that P-Ranks meant you also had to kill every enemy. That would have been so much worse. This is the bit that that um, destroys my muscle memory, because you, if you're running at top speed, you will run right into those cows. the secret, actually. Doing that for the first time absolutely sucked. Whoa, I was cutting that- I was cutting that way closer than I would like to. Or than I would have liked to. He didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I will get those. Hey, John. Bye, John. The thing is right up here, isn't it? Yeah. I, that was incredible. I wonder if that's consistent. That was required. Here you.
the, the patron art is so cute. I, I think I missed one of the pizza marts. No problem. My hard cutoff for missing toppins is nine. If I if I miss nine toppins or more, I have to go back and find and have to grab the ones that I missed. But I'm fine with missing one. No sausage today, unfortunately. <laughs> this is another great level. While I'm here, I'm just gonna grab the top end because it is a like, pain to grab while you're being chased. Music is so good. I, I keep looking at the Pepino dancing and I keep thinking about Moe's, like, funk dancing for self-defense. Because <laughs> that is another show... I, I mentioned that my... because my folks were... are... very literate in older older shows, I got exposed to a lot of it when I was growing up. This That included The Simpsons. And I, I know people joke a lot about how how awful Simpsons is nowadays, but old Simpsons, man? Old Simpsons was very, very good. Like, everything before I'd wagered season 10 is primo Simpsons. And there are, like, some... They... They hit the mark every once in a while in the modern seasons. I'm not gonna pretend that there are there are no good episodes of the modern day. It's just that most of them are very bland. I the the phrase gets turned gets thrown around a lot of a uh, zombie Simpsons, and it, it really is true. But they've been through so many different iterations. So many different scenarios, so many different just things happening to all the characters that they're they're well and truly out of ideas. So 90% of the episodes are just rehash of things that they've already done, but better, because they had a better writing staff back then. They still hit their mark, kind of, but it's not nearly as good. And that's that's just talking about the episodes where they do do decently well, which isn't always. Some of the episodes are just bad.
but between b between Matt Groening's three shows, and yes, he does have three shows, I still don't know what the situation is with Disenchantment nowadays. I, I was hoping that show would be good. I've heard it's kind of just, like, iffy, kind of good, but not nothing too spectacular. Eesh. But Futurama is just so, so amazing. To anyone who's never seen who's never seen Futurama, I I can't recommend it enough. If just for the quality of the humor. Because the jokes, not only are they good jokes, they're actually like well written and unique jokes. Jokes that only that show could was capable of making, or I guess I should say is. Because <laughs> to the to the uninitiated, um, there's a there's a chance that Simpson uh, Simpsons there's a chance that Futurama might be coming back. Now I don't I don't know any of the details, but supposedly they have the entire voice cast on call, including John DiMaggio miraculously. John DiMaggio was hardballing for for uh, for more pay, and I guess he got it. But I don't know how. I, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know how it's gonna work. I can already rent the next the next boss door, but I'm I'm gonna wait on that. I don't know the foggiest idea how it's gonna work, and I really hope that. Like rewatching this this vod in two years, if I I hope I don't have to look back and go, God, remember when we had hope about the new Futurama seasons? Because on one hand, the final episode of the la of the last season, meanwhile, is one of the best season finales I think a, an animated show has ever gotten, and I truly do mean that. It, tr it really is beautiful. And also, when you compare it end-to-end -end with the other episodes from Season 10, by the end of it all, Futurama was starting to get a little withered. The characters were a lot more one-note and flanderized. By the time you get to... When you get to Meanwhile, it really does feel like an episode that had been on the back burner for God knows how long, in the event that the show ever got cancelled. And, like, cancelled for good. Kind of like the wormhole cliffhanger at the end of the of one of the Futurama movies. That if if they were ever in need of, if they ever wanted to make more episodes, they could. But they would have to do, they they would have to do some explaining first. But I, I, I won't say anything about Meanwhile, because th those who have seen it know know how good of an episode it is, and those who haven't, have an excuse to start watching Futurama. Also, more Q. <laughs> That's so funny. A bit of an explanation for those who aren't aware. I, the title card for this said featuring Mort the Chicken. Mort the Chicken was an old PS1, like, 3D platformer. And the creator of Pizza Tower kind of just reached out to the creator of Mort the Chicken and was like, Hey, can I use your product? Can I use your... Can I use Mort the Chicken in something? And the guy was just like, sure, go for it. There isn't really a deep, re a deep reason for it, and I don't think there was a deep reason for Mort the Chicken either. I think the the plot was just you fell down a well.
But Matt Groening's shows have always been famous for having that sort of tact. But I, Futurama, I think, deserves the credit a bit more than The Simpsons does. No. Well, so much for the so much for that chef task. To the point that I don't remember what they actually end up calling it, but there is actually a theory that is named after Futurama. Or I think it's I think it's specifically named after Bender. Because there's an episode in particular where the professor invents a device that allows two people to swap minds. The catch is that they can't directly swap back. They can't perform that same operation again, and they would need an, an, an intermediary in order to get back to the way things were. And they ended up making like a, st a um, statistical theory out of it, which is just amazing. I think there was, like, if they, every once in a while, cartoons will do something like that. Like, I, I forget if it was American Dad. I think it was American Dad. There was some, like, approximation for some ridiculously hard con mathematical constant that turned out to be really, really, really close. I, I, I'm either thinking of that or... It was the Higgs boson, right? That's what I was thinking of. It was the, the mass of the Higgs boson. And they ended up, like, Homer ends up throwing out a guess and it ends up being really, really, really close. Just mirac either miraculously or just because it was an educated guess by the writers. And the fact that they even were able to make that guess in the first place is insane. I was, I was kind of hoping that would get me the chef task, but I guess that doesn't count as a place, uh, as a um, position that you can't reach. I didn't grab the treasure, unfortunately. It is no problem. Futurama is a great show. Though I will say, by the time it got past the movies, you can definitely start to, to feel the age. Like I said, when you compare it with the rest of, when you compare the final episode with the rest of the episode in season 10, it's kind of obvious that the writers were getting a bit fatigued. Because I, I mentioned this thing offhand, there is something that was named after The Simpsons called Flanderization. And it's usually attributed to cartoons, but it happens all the time in TV, where a character at the start of a show's running is a lot more complex, and by the time you get to later seasons, for the sake of maintaining, maintaining a constant character, their traits are simplified. And eventually, the character is basically unrecognizable, and the classic example is Ned Flanders. That back in the older episodes of The Simpsons, Flanders was a lot more complex of a character. He wasn't just constant Christian goody-goody guy. But he was genuinely quite competitive. And would be at odds with Homer... With Homer for logical reasons, and you didn't just shrug him off because, oh, hi, Hiddly Ho, Homer's a friend, and a good Christian, so I won't say a bad word about him. No. Like, the, the there's an episode in particular where Flanders and Homer both recruit, recruit Bart, and it's either Rod or Todd, I don't remember which, for a golf game. 
And they're both hyper competitive, not just Homer. Flanders, too. But by the time you get to the later seasons, that kind of behavior is just unnatural for the characters because of how much they've been simplified. Patrick Starr is another great example where he started out stupid, but also like more complex than just a dumbass. You get to the later episodes and he does things that are almost intentionally harmful to himself, Spongebob, and basically everyone around him just because he's a dumbass. And that is his only character trait. It was inevitable that I was gonna that I was gonna beef that. Ooh. And that was happening with the Futurama characters as well. Possibly not as much. But you could really s nail nail every single one of the characters with probably four adjectives or less. And it would perfectly describe them in every scene they were in. Another thing that sticks out a lot with, with some of the later episodes is you can definitely tell the A plot and the B plot for a lot of episodes are not written at the same time. And there's almost like a quality dip with some of them. Like there's one in particular near the very, very end. Long story short, character, a smelly character falls in love with a character who's lost her sense of smell. And it sounds silly, but the episode's actually really sweet. The B-plot of that episode is of a completely different quality. And coincidentally, it's also one of the worst side plots of any of in the entire show. It's just not funny, it's not good. <laughs> That one in particular kind of just flops. But you can definitely tell that they were written at different periods of time. One was written closer to the when the writers were in their prime. And the, the latter was written probably a few weeks before the episode went live. If that because they needed something to, to fill space. I'm not going to miss I'm not going to miss Jerome this time. Also, small little detail when Gustavo jumps down and shows you where you're supposed to go, if an enemy is where he's standing, he'll actually kill the enemy and give you a plus one on your combo. I didn't notice that until recently, but it's it's hilarious. the... Is that every level? It is. Okay. I guess we fight Vigilante then. And for Pepperman, there is a shred of hope of me doing, a, doing it hitless. That's not gonna happen here. This guy's real tough. You...
Oh god. Okay, the cow the cow is not here yet. I did just P rank this boss, so if I if I managed damn it, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> I was about to say if I managed to do it again, that's probably why. Cause this this guy, you can kill him really, really quickly if you're good with the with the charge shots. I'm not, but you can you, you if you're good with it. You can do it very, very quickly. Very good music. Did I see that right? Or was there actually a frame before the camera panned over where Pepino was standing where he's supposed to be standing in this scene? I wonder if I saw that right. That's pretty funny. Damn. Floor 2 did not take long at all. Welcome to Floor 3, dickhead. Aw. They're, they're slowly making up for it. And now we get to the biggest bop in the game. <laughs> Which segues me into something... I was thinking about this before I even started streaming today. That... I'm very happy that this game does not demonize pineapple on pizza. Because I know it's it's the kind of thing that's it's slowly falling out of vogue to hate on pineapple on pizza. But every once in a while, there will be one person who just vehemently hates it. Also, quick thing. Speaking of pineapple, watch this. They pose with you. <laughs> and apparently in older versions of the game... They would actually, they would actually parry you. I don't know what the counterplay would be to that, though. I think you would just have to, like, wait for them to parry and then, and then uppercut them or something. Maybe that was back in the day when, you had, when Pepino still had the slap, so maybe you would just slap him. I gotta get more run space. But, um... I am happy that it's slowly falling out of vogue, but every once in a while there would be that one person that really, really, really hates pineapple on pizza. And I'm gonna be real. Pineapple on pizza is good. I I, I honestly love it. But I need to make it, I, I wanna make a very important distinction. I hate Hawaiian pizza. I feel like pineapple is, uh, this is my personal theory, that I feel like pineapple is scapegoated because Canadian bacon on pizza is nasty. I've always, I've always believed that. I, I just don't, I've never found it to be that good. And I mean, it makes sense that it's called Canadian bacon because I think uh, Hawaiian pizza is originally a Canadian thing, I thought. But pineapple on pizza is good. Canadian bacon just isn't. Ham in general is a meat that you you really have to respect when you're putting in a dish because it overpowers so much. It, it's so easy to overpower the other stuff in the dish.
you're, you're liable to end up with a meal that's just, it just tastes like ham and nothing else. And I mean, if you're into that, good on you. I'm sure you'll love Hawaiian pizza, but I'm not one of those people. Damn it, I messed it up. But I, I do need to go out of my way and try more pizza toppings that I haven't tried before. Because there are some weird, weird, weird ones. Though to be fair, I can only I only really say that because I haven't tried them myself. Things like um like mayo on pizza, eggplant on pizza, um banana curry pizza, that kind of stuff. It's like things that on at a surface level I look at it and I go, that sounds disgusting. But that's just because I've never tried it before. For all I know, mayo on pizza is delicious. Hmm. I'm kind of tempted to do lap two on this, and I'll... That was... <laughs> that was horrendous. In that last section before, um... Before the before the John Pillar, there's a little pit, and McPig is sitting inside that pit sleeping. I don't think I'll be able to go through this level fast enough to show it to show it comfortably though, but it is there. You know what was another show that I watched the watched more recently that I ended up adoring was uh, Gravity Falls because I was very late to the bandwagon on that one. I only watched it about like a year ago at a friend's request and ended up absolutely loving it. I, I sincerely hope that whatever it is that that Alex Hirsch is working on next, I hope he takes his time and I hope it's as good as Gravity Falls. <laughs> Because, oh my god. Season 1 was, like, good. You could definitely get the sense that he was fighting with Disney over what he could and couldn't put in the show. But once he once he got to Season 2 and the reins were off, it was... It just went crazy. As soon as, Bi as, soon as Bill Cipher got there, the, the show just took off in, in terms of quality. Kind of fitting in a way, because Bill Cipher is just voiced by Alex Hirsch. I've already gotten that right. Because off the top of my head, the characters that are voiced by Alex Hirsch are Stan Pines, Seuss, and Bill. I think. That sound that sounds about right. But everyone in the voice cast just did an amazing, amazing job. Not to mention that the similar thing as Futurama, the writing was so good because of how unique the humor was. Because with, with shows like Family Guy and even The Simpsons at times, you can tell where a joke is going before the joke is done. And if a show can do can subvert your expectations consistently, when it comes to humor, it it is going to be such a good, such a better show. Because that's why I, I've never been. This is gonna sound weird. I've never been a big meme guy, because so much of it is just like call and response. You know where the joke is going, so you laugh anyway. And now, granted, not all memes are like that, but a good chunk of them are. Also, while I'm over here, I have most of the outfits. I I don't want to pick the shitty cook. I think I just go pizza, man. Seems st like st good standard outfit. Speaking of memes, that title card is apparently a meme.
but I haven't been on Reddit in ages, and I'm not really on any other social network, for that matter. And calling, calling Reddit a social network is kind of a stretch, I'll admit. It's an anti-social network. This level in particular has some of the some of the most obnoxious uh, chef tasks. There's one in particular to cut all of the wood in the entire level in both sections, both both the Gustavo section and the Pepino section, and that is a lot to do. <laughs> I love that this this track in particular just unabashedly uses stock monkey noises. It works surprisingly well. <laughs> Wrong button. There we go. Kick the rat. Oop. Also, there was a recent update, and among other things, uh, you can no longer lose your combo in here, which I, I thought was interesting. I guess it makes sense since you can't see it. This character does take some getting used to, but he, he is a lot of fun. <laughs> These, uh, hey, I'm not a fan of the cactuses. <laughs> I love Brick with his arms crossed in the back. He, in all of his shots, he just looks like such a goober. I've lost my train of thought, which <laughs> would prefer not to not to happen since we're only on floor three. I I do remember seeing that the um this level in particular is a layover from a really old uh, an older demo version. And I, that's true for a lot of stuff in this game, to be fair, but this one in particular... You would only play as Pepino, and you would deliver the pizzas, or each of the five pizzas, to the houses. And if you missed one, if the pizza went cold, a Gustavo would show up, take you back to the, to the like, initial area, and punch you in the balls. <laughs> And he didn't actually. It's like this. He would he would punch like the center the, the center point of Pepino's body, which would be like his chest ish. But it really does look like it's punching him in the balls. <laughs> I've heard rumors that this level is an absolute nightmare to P-Rank, but I have, I have yet to P-Rank this one, and I probably, I'm gonna wait, I think. Because between how jank, how jank Gustavo can be when you're, when you're not good at using him, between that and also how many other levels I'd have to get through first, I'd have to get through P-Ranking all of the second area before I even think about P-Ranking these.
I want to try and do them in order. Also, apparently the one who's yodeling is Brick. <laughs> I didn't know this, but apparently in the in the game's files, the the sound file for the yodel is called Brick Yodel. So the rat is the one that's doing it. Honestly, good for him. <laughs> No. <laughs> right, I forgot you can't do this. You can't do the trick as Gustavo because he doesn't have a grab. Keep trying to do the trick on instinct and it's not it's not working because Gustavo is a different character. <laughs> that was the bit in particular that is nightmarish on a P rank. <laughs> At least from what I've heard. Come on. Thanks for the guidance, Mr. Stick. surprise if this is the largest area in the game. It definitely feels like it. It's got to be either this place or Pig City. Both of the areas that have Gustavo in them are humongous. Back to that guy. I was trying to taunt along with the music, but it, the, the delay is too long. What am I missing? Golf and space. <laughs> oh, shoot. What's this? Oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I haven't seen this before. Kind of reminds me of the barrel. Maybe that maybe that was like a an early pro what would end up becoming the barrel. Also, best music in the game. Hands down.
What was that? That was something in a trash can. <laughs> This plate's always weirded me out because there's so many eyes in it. There's so many eyes and just random facial features on the wall. And yet, I don't think there's any secrets in the walls around here. It's always, it's always thrown me off. Oh, right. Okay. They're like here? Nope, I completely missed. <laughs> that was a blind guess for where they were, so I guess I get I I suppose I get credit for trying. I said this before, but the, the backgrounds are so good. Oh, oops. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna get Turbo Tunnel. No! I hit a wall. It, there's, a, there's an achievement specifically for that part if you don't hit any of the ceilings. I'm not even sure what hit me there. Oh shoot, Gustavo, let's go. God, the hitbox on that is so weird. It works though. It took me so long to figure out where where the treasure was on this level. Also, I missed one of the toppings. I'm not actually sure where. Ah! It's no biggie. Pardon me? I have a very nice half melted glass of a uh, of tea next to me. Hey, I need to take a quick sip because I have been talking nonstop for like an hour, hour and a half. Real quick, let me close and reopen my Twitch stats so I, I can see how long I'm gonna go on. Hour thirty two. Okay.
another another random fun fact. Apparently, in the original version of of this, back when it was just the demo, there was a demo that was just for this level. And instead of being like a movie trip, um, like a a movie poster sort of vibe, it was in reference to Doom, and it it looked hilarious. Come here, you. Primo Berg. Weird. Okay, so then <laughs> that for some reason knocked it backwards. Those golf demons are also apparently a Doom reference. Is nice. It, the these guys are probably a reference to something, but I honestly don't know for sure, and that's a good feeling. Originality is difficult to replicate. Oh. <laughs> That sucks. <laughs> Hang on. I want the I want the other secret. This also means I'm probably gonna miss out on Primo Berg. Could never figure out if that was pasta or or what. Whatever it is, it's cute. Yeah, I'm gonna be cutting it close, even if I even if, even if I somehow manage to get Primo Berg. It's 
stop, please. <laughs> Oh, right. I forgot, the course is super short. There is some pretty, some pretty funny cheese that you can do here. Where, um, I forget what you, what you have to do. It's like you bring one of the, one of the, bur one of the burger guys over and have him hit the, hit the ball. That was weird. You have the burger guy hit the ball, and then the ball will hit the John Pillar, and then you can just go to the very left of the level and leave. And skip both of these little side courses. Oh my god. There we go. I need a slightly shallow, shallower angle. I'd wager this is one of the easiest levels to peer rank. Because on the second lap, you can you can kind of just blitz through without doing any of the golf stuff. A lot of the danger of the TP rank is just how hard is it to do lap two. Not to mention half of this half of it is an auto scroller. Apparently, this level is a it, this is an artifact of a older level called Pinball, that I don't actually know if people liked it or not. I think it was mainly just changed because it was too, it was too much of an auto-scroller. But this is, this level is a nice happy medium, and even then, this level, uh, the Freaking chucksters get annoying after a, after a little. But now we can go and fight the big cheese, the noise. Out of the bosses, I think he's my favorite. There, there. I can't quite describe it, but there's just a lot more personality with this guy. <laughs> Just so, with little things like that. I, I don't actually know what he just did. I think he put on a Papino mask for a second. But this is this is one of those bosses that's actually great parry practice. If you're not very good with parrying and you want to get better, this is the perfect boss to, to get better with it. Because all of his attacks are easy enough to parry and very rewarding, because... You can only attack him during the during the downtime I'm anyway. That was clean. That was very clean. It's the noise. -a.
Overall, that went well. I think that's... That might be an S? I don't actually know how many times I got hit. <laughs> that is such a good bit. It's just like some grudge match that the, the two of them have been feuding over for years. It reaches a point where he has the upper hand. And his wife comes on comes on stage, pulls him off the ring, like, come on, on a heave out enough. It's your turn to work at the cafe. Also, yeah, Esrak. I think that's every level. I missed the two of the treasures, but at this point I'm I'm coming to terms with the fact that I will not, in fact, be getting the the fun the funny ending. It's no problem. <laughs> also, I am obligated to do this. Hey man, what's up? <laughs> I'm I'm just I, I'm obligated to do that. This is that's such a funny little bit in the background. This is one of the cool this is one of the coolest levels in general. <laughs> I especially like the big red sign that says no crime allowed. And no bacon as well. <laughs> I, I could try to get the, the camera achievement just idly. No, I missed one. Oh. <laughs> Pizza dog. I don't know where that laugh is from, but they, they use that laugh a couple of times in the soundtrack. Also, while I'm here, I gotta do the bacon room. 
to those that didn't know there, that this was here, uh, there's a bacon room. And the look at the background. There is no background except for the static pig face that follows you around. This music is this music is real good. I love Brick reading the newspaper. Brick, why? <laughs> there, there's both a pizza cat and a pizza dog. <laughs> That sound, wait a minute. That orchestra hit sound is used in Katamari. I recognize that. <laughs> That's the sound that plays... Oh, I don't remember. I think it's when you make a star for the first time. I don't remember for certain, though. No, I think it's I think it's when it shows your size of the king. That's what it was. Hey, you said no crime allowed, but how about rats? Based on this, I feel like the answer is no. Brick is my brick is my emotional support animal. God <laughs> Where are you? I notice that I don't run very much as these two. I don't know why. Hello there. Come on. <laughs> I I love how the the backgrounds change. How dramatically they change during pizza time. 
Like now it's at a hotel, it says tower. It's so great. I This game was well worth its time in the oven. There's a, there's so much attention to, good attention to detail. Back to that guy. Unfortunately, that's the last time we'll see that gag, but it's still one of the funny, <laughs> one of the funniest visual gags in this whole game. Oh no, it's Snotty, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I won't hurt you. <laughs> Frankly, I'd be scared too if uh, an Italian man was running towards me at Mach 2. Okay. Move, please. I know you can cheese this room, but it's honestly more fun to do it the long way. Door is stuck, door is stuck. I think it's, suppo it's supposed to be saying don't stop, but it definitely- it, it, it sounds so much like it's saying door stuck. <laughs> okay, I see how I'm supposed to do this. There you go. Pizza mode.
This is step five on the eightfold path to become Italian. Become pizza. Right, I forgot there's a secret down here. Okay, so somehow I found all three secrets. I've yet to do that on the main file. That patron in particular is so cute. I know that's probably someone's persona or something, but it, it, it's cute. It's, it's a cute persona. This is a cool bet. But there's two there's two different steps. Three really. As my reward I get a delicious hot dog. move on to this one. I've already unlocked the poop clothes, but for another thing, for those unaware, if you crouch on one of the poop tiles for, I think it's 10 seconds without, without, um, uncrouching, you get a special set of brown clothes. <laughs> Which is very, very amusing, but also, frankly, disgusting. <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things that, like, as I've gotten older, poop has gotten less and less funny. Poop is just nasty, because, you know, it's poop. I remember seeing a freaking, I remember seeing a YouTube comment that really solidified that. That not only is this a, not only is this a, a sewer, this is also a sewer for a bunch of people who have done nothing but eat pizza. <laughs> Which, good lord, <laughs> I can only imagine the hell that Pepino is going through right now. Frankly, I don't want to imagine it. But the the pipe gimmick is interesting enough, but the this level can be a massive headache. No. I was hoping that wouldn't happen. 
There you go. I was hoping that would happen. I realized Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was another thing that was, it was like right on the cusp of when I, of like, I was right on the cusp of the age where I would have naturally gotten into it. It seemed like one of those shows where it was so, like, the core concept was so ridiculous that the show itself was, like, they had more creative liberty to just do weird things and just do, like, weird and funny plots. So it ended up being a more, a way more enjoyable show as a result. I was about to say, if that counted, I would have been so mad. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, parrying that one is quite tough. I don't know how I managed to grab that, but I'll take it. That one in particular that one in particular is also quite cute. Alright, come on. Please. Please. <laughs> Please. Cheese. Thank you. I just had to say cheese. <laughs> should play through the Wario Land games at some point, because to this day, the only Wario Land that I played is Shaken, and even then I was super young, so I don't remember much about it. Though I do know one absolutely amazing fact. Um, so the game Wario Land Shaken, it is done by the same group of people who did Kirby's Epic Yarn and Kirby's Woolly World, Kirby, um, Kirby's Woolly World, Yoshi's Wo Woolly World, Yoshi's Crafted World, all the games in that sort of, like, felt and, felt and knitted art style. Same people who did Wario Land Shake It. And I figured this out completely by accident because I was watching a speedrun of Shake It I heard the sounds, the sounds for the menu, and I thought, wait a minute, those sounds are really, really familiar. What do I know that from? And apparently, Epic Yarn. Which is crazy. I have 
it. It's the first time I've ever done that room the intended way. I've, al I've always just super jumped up. I'm missing one level. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm missing the fridge level, I think. I'll go with the camo. Don't worry, Snotty, I won't hurt you. Oh, hello. Right. <laughs> There's a particular achievement for beating this whole level without ever falling in a pit, and I mean, I'll try. <laughs> no promises, though. That one in particular seems like one of the harder ones. I don't know how I managed to not fall in there. Wait a minute. Oh, that's so cute. Gustavo in his in his log cabin. It does feel weird to say, but I I feel like the only time I would ever want to live in a log cabin is during the is during the summer. Cause a log cabin during the winter just sounds like torture. Cause imagine having to deal having to deal with manually shoveling your own your own driveway and the surrounding area out of fear of literally not being able to leave otherwise. This is the other bit, um, the Santas. So, these Santa Claus. Something I should note about them. I, I mentioned before how I'm... I'm actually pretty good at picking up, at picking out sounds. And like, recognizing them from other things. The sounds that this, this Santa, the Santa Claus. That laugh. The, I, I don't know about the, fir the, the first half, but the second half where he's cackling, like the yeah, <laughs> I guarantee you is from Little Big Planet. Or at least it's the same stock sound that's also used in Little Big Planet. I 
I swear to you, it's the same sound. <laughs> And it's kind of hard to tell because they use oh, it's kind of hard to tell because they use the they use the sound at like different different pitches at different times. But I'm 99% sure. Uh oh, I'm just gonna go this way. I I don't care that much about the secret. <laughs> what is going on in the background right now? There's John and Cheese milk. Spicy... Does that say pineapple barbecue sauce? That's Satan's choice, I see. Very hot potato down there. There's some weird, like, you know, the, the cactus pickles. Too much mayo. <laughs> and an edible cheese cigar. I love it. I just missed all of those berries. That's more like it. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you can actually kill Santa during this part during this part. Looks like the answer is no, because you can't grab enemies. I guess you would you would have to do it during the escape sequence. And the music here is so good. Hey, John. This definitely seems like one of the most interesting levels to, to P rank. Because when you're doing the lap two, uh, you lose the Satan's Choice power up. I'll, I'll show off the place where you, where you have to give it up. But you have to go through this whole second lap without the Satan's Choice, and you just have to go backwards as regular Pepino. And. Your route changes pretty distinctly based on what, based on where you um, where you break blocks and what paths you make for yourself. And I wonder if it'd be faster or faster slash safer to kill some time breaking some of the ice blocks so that during the second lap you don't bonk into them. It's over here, actually. Free milk. <laughs> that was a 75 combo. That was pretty nice.
All right, Mr. Stick. Let's do this. Oh. I, I just noticed. I think the... Oh, I forget the font, the price of the last one. The price of the last door is, I think it's 220. It's either 220 or 240. I think it used to be 240. Or something like that. I don't remember for cer for certain, but I, I I was hoping I'd be able to skip a level or something, just for the for the fun of it, you know. I this boss is kind of easy, but I do love the concept of it. Not to mention the animations are sublime for this boss in particular. For every, every single person that I've seen play this game has had the same reaction of, oh god, I don't like the way he moves. <laughs> just, it is ubiquitous. But you can clown on him pretty easily. Damn it. <laughs> oh, now I parry it. Please don't die, that would be bad. Interesting thing that I realized while screwing around with this boss, you actually can't parry these guys. You can parry the heads, but you cannot parry the bodies as they're running around. That was really lucky. Like in this bit, you can parry uh, you can parry the projectiles as they're flying around, but you cannot parry the brain bodies. Just an interesting thing. I don't know why you ever would need to, but like a tiny tiny little thing. I'd prefer not to die here. All right, let's book it. It's such a menacing boss, but it's been it has kind of been nerfed into the ground. Can't say I'm complaining. That was bad. I love the little sentences. Good job. That was awful. Let's see. I kind of like that theory, actually. It would definitely explain how the entire background sort of shifts as, as the fight goes on. But now we move on to the last three levels. And... Jokes aside, this one don't make a sound as unironically one of my favorite levels. 
the fact that they managed to make a the fact that they managed to take a stealth level and make it actually interesting and engaging and not just a, f a five minutes a uh, five minutes straight of oh god I have to stay out of the, the guy's sightline again it's actually really engaging and you can still go the main thing is that you can even when you're avoiding the sight lines you can still go as fast as you can as you possibly can stop that it is funny fnaf level but it's funny fnaf level with but with uh, panache and I, I i do respect that Oh, damn it. Come on. <laughs> hey, that could have been bad. Oh shoot, no! Uh, I, I was so close to being able to do it, to do the other one. There is another achieve, there, there's another chef task that's actually very tough. Uh oh. Oops. <laughs> it was a bit too hasty there. There's another chef task that requires you to beat this entire level and I think six buzzers or less? It gives you a little bit of wiggle room, but it's still very tough. And you are damn near required to use a super taunt for that bit. Because I don't think there's a there's a, any other way to kill that particular guy. <laughs> hey, loser. I still don't fully understand the deal with the, the puppet one. Because I think he's supposed to be a tomato, but I, I really don't see it. it, it ma all the others match up with the with the top, and there's, they're, they're sort of an analog of pretty well, but... Tomato one, not really. Oh! Uh-oh. Oh no. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Yeah, screw it. This one is particularly tricky on your first time, because if you mess up at all, that puppet is coming for you. And I, I mean, I did mess up there, but more than once, and the puppet is going to is going to get you. Things will be fine. Things will be fine. You're coming with me, Jerome.
Come on. Oh. <laughs> that is that is so satisfying. Also, I've heard that in older version in older versions of this level, the pineapple guy could actually jump scare you. I don't know how common it was, but it was it was a thing that could happen. I, I think it was the it, it was the that older beta version of the Oktoberfest jump scare. Which, by the way, that is a thing. <laughs> there is a very low chance that when you get jump scared. Instead of playing the normal animation where they like scream and, and stare at the screen, it plays Oktoberfest. <laughs> and just the phrase Oktoberfest jump scare just fills me with such unexplainable emotions. Hello. I actually forget what movie that's referencing. I've definitely heard that reference before. But the, the chef task is called, and this is my gun and a stick. I don't know what, the, what and this is my boomstick is from, but I've definitely heard it before. Now onto this one. If I've heard correctly, Pizza Scare was actually a... It was like a holiday version of P of Pizza Scape. And you can kind of... You can kind of tell because the, the music is a remix of Pizza Scape. It uses the same secret, secret theme. And it is sort of like a Party City version of... Um, of Pizza Scape. This stupid ghost. <laughs> Dealing with him the whole time is not ideal. Wait, I'm... Do I even bother with that? I don't have Jerome, so that there's not really a point.
This is a this is a cute gimmick. And now I have to go back down and, and get him back. We take it and we run. That is a lot of work for one secret. I love Gustavo's brick mask. It is adorable. Oh god, this this room is a direct riff on the on, on the um the room for Pete's escape, isn't it? It's closer than I was expecting. Alright, nice knowing you, ghost. One level left, and then we do the final boss. I think I could technically, yeah, stick, uh, stick's ready, so I really could do it now. But what, what fun would it be without a little war? This is also one of the best levels in the game. They, they really did just put two of the best levels right at the end. And I have, I've tried my best to P-rank this one. I have not been able to. This is one of the deceptively difficult. Even though you're, you're already on a timer, so everything that you have to get is really, is really easy to get. Everything's directly in your path. But there's just, there are certain things about it that are just very tricky. Also. Stop! Just give me that. Thank you. I could do the secrets, but this is one of those that's just, it's it's more fun, honestly, to ignore the secrets and just blitz as fast as I can. Or as medium speed as I can. I'm I'm not gonna call this fast.
Oh, wait. The Gustavo room is up here. I can't uppercut. Uh-oh. I guess we leave it behind. That sucks. I hate these. I hate the rocket rocket guys. Oh god. <laughs> I forgot about the frogs. All right. So that that's every level. So all we got left is the the final encounter. And that'll be it. Hey stick. For all that, I missed, what, two toppings? Yeah. Not bad. Let's go. <laughs> the portrait is so big. I've always been so disappointed that the um the battle doesn't start by the moon turning into the turning into a piece of pizza. There we go. No! <laughs> I was hoping to do it super cleanly. <laughs> That's something else I've heard. Apparently, this character is based on, uh, if you know the the Sopper Mugen, that's like, like the fighting the fighting game engine where people put in like anime girls and Ronald McDonald and characters from other fighting games and stuff like that. Uh, this character is apparently based on Ronald McDonald from that game. Which is frankly hilarious. Gah, that was unlucky. Cogs are really annoying. And that extra that extra bit of chaos ends up causing a lot of problems. No power-ups, no gimmicks, just pure Italian rage. This is the dance that I think is supposed to be the, the dance from The Simpsons. I might be misinformed, though. Oh, 
Oh, that's cool. <laughs> if you pile drive Gustavo into him, it immediately starts hitting. Loser. <laughs> Take it. We're almost there. Oh god, right. <laughs> Forgot, it's the next bit that he does two attacks. And then two, and then three. Time to sit back, drink some tea. And watch as this, this man gets sent all the way to the... all the way back down to Italy. I don't know where I was going with that, but whatever. Only one thing left to do. Oh, come on. I was trying to- I was trying to whack Santa Claus, but it doesn't seem like that's happening. <laughs> yeah, snotty!
You know what? Just just ignore that that happened and move on. Look at back over here. Mort, you're coming with me. Yes! There's my PP close. That's the reward for beating the game for the second time. Unfortunately, though... Yeah. No John. I would've liked to get the John outfit, but... I it, was pretty, it became pretty apparent that I, would, I either wouldn't have had enough treasures or I wouldn't have had enough time. Maybe, maybe one day I'll try. I'll like actually try to get it under two hours fifteen. Yeah, dang game. Ooh. Exhausting though. A reverse mode could be funny. Kind of like um, kind of like mirror mode in Mario Kart. Yeah, there, there are definitely some levels that would be weird to do backwards. Golf and Gnome Forest both come to mind. Like, any any of the levels with Gustavo, any of the levels with, um... Like, special gimmicks that you have to do in order to progress. I guess in theory you could do it. You could, like, construct them so that they happen backwards, but that wouldn't happen all- that wouldn't work all the time. Don't Make a Sound also comes to mind. I could just I, I could just skip this, but I'm I think I'm I'm gonna let it play out. Hmm. Uh, 
Ah, uh, we don't get to see John tearing it up on the dance floor. Those are that was latitude and longitude. I have to wonder what the, what that's the latitude and longitude of. My guesses are either it's someone's house or it's a pizza place. Or it's a like a pizza place called Pizza Tower or something like that. I love the pizza head in the background that looks like Ronald McDonald. Right, crap, it was in the... It's not in this list, it's in the... I must have missed it. In the other list, one of the patron names is Tsar Theodore... What was it? Tsar Theodore Malik of Grulovia. Which is a freaking Psychonauts reference. That is a great set of games, by the way. And they're not perfect. Neither of them are. But they're both they're, they're both very good 3D platformers, especially for the time. Cause Psychonauts the original Psychonauts came out I wanna say midway through the PS2's lifespan. And it's certainly a bit janky. I some of that definitely has to do with its age. But it's really, really good. Very good plot, very humorous. The second one is also amazing, but it's a bit more story-based. You can tell a whole lot of love went into both of them. And for the second one specifically, the... Um, uh, Tim Schafer, the lead for the project, made it a point to not crunch or at least crunch as little as possible which i mean i can appreciate more studios need to do that <laughs> oh and even after all that brick is still there i'm doing brick things i'm not actually sure what my final rank would be I have a feeling it's gonna be that's the one officer. No, damn, 82? No judgment. <laughs> Total time, 2 hours, 40 minutes, 13 seconds. Actually not bad. But yeah, <laughs> Snotty approved. Great game. I think that's all I'm gonna do. We, we ended it out right before the three hour mark. But I think that's all I got for now. Oops. Thanks for the people who stopped by. <laughs>